What's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. So today's random video is brought to you by Shubis. Shubis, thanks for hanging out in the live feed with me most of the days. It's really uh, nice to see you there, as well as the rest of you that uh, I don't mention. But anyway, here's the thing. I post random videos because I think it's interesting and it's part of what I do. So. This is a little tri tribute to you, Shubis. And the random video of today is the EDM. I had to take the EDM apart a little bit and fix some stuff, and so I thought I'd show you while I had it apart what's inside of this thing. So let's see what's in there. It's pretty cool. All right, so just in case you weren't aware, the wire EDM is an electrical discharge machining. It runs off of a little wire. Uh, I made a video in the past. I'll find it, and I'll link it in the description. But this is an overview of what's inside this thing. Just something for you to look at. It's pretty cool. Let's have a look. Okay, first things first. Um, the whole wire EDM machine is pretty straightforward and simple. I'm not going to open that. There's a, there's a really small brass wire. All right, it's right here. And it runs down this guy and runs down this guy. And it's charged with an electrical potential. And the table here is not. The table is grounded. And what happens is, is you place material here and it electrically removes the material without ever touching it. This little bitty tiny brass wire right here, you can see how small it actually is. It's a half a millimeter. You can get different size wire. This just happens to be a half a mil. It's brass. So what happens is, is you're electrically removing material. It only works on metallic or electrical uh, conductive materials, but it's pretty sweet. This is a, a different axis. This is called the B and it spins in uh, a 360 degree. So this head actually moves so you can offset this and cut this with a taper. But then also you've got the B so you can spin here and you've got the X and the Y. So they call this the U and the V, U and V, and then X and Y, which is the table, and then B. So that's how many axes there are on this guy. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with this. I'm just going to go with the overview of what's inside this thing. Now briefly, uh, there's a water system here, all right, and there's a water system here, and then there's a water chiller right there, and then the whole bottom of this is actually a tank. And what's happening here is the water is being processed by sort of like a reverse osmosis process, but it makes the water very, very unconductive. This is just a type of, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called now, imagine that, I'm going to remember, forget, okay, it's a resin. All right, it's a type of resin. I've actually never had to replace those. We have filters for those. We also have filters for these, but I haven't had to replace those yet either. Um, so what do we got? All right, we've got the computer here, which is literally everything is inside of this box. The computer brain, this is it. This is the whole computer. This is actually a hard drive over here. And this is the interface board where all of your, all of your buttons are at, okay? and then the screens on the front. This is an all-in-one unit. I've seen these on other type of machines. I don't know if this one's custom, but it's pretty cool, pretty interesting. USB up here, that cord just runs over to the little USB jacks down inside there on the motherboard. Doop. Probably out of focus. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool little, little machine. I've seen these before. This one actually runs off a 24 volt DC, three amps. So it's a DC PC. It's a DC PC, well most of them are, but Anyway, it's got an Ethernet jack and it's got a communications port back here as well. You can't control this completely outside of this machine. This little box is designed only for the, uh, the B axis here. It's, the, it's the, the controls for when you're working with it. I don't work with it too often. 
Actually, I've never worked with it myself, but I've uh, had someone else show me before, a long, long time ago when I first started here, how to operate that. It's real simple, it's all in the coding, but, but I personally haven't used it for a project yet. Okay, so let's go around to the least interesting part. Back here in the back, since this machine's three-phase, we have a switch there which runs this three-phase converter. It's mounted upside down, imagine that. And uh, the converter just converts a single phase 220 volts into three phase 220 volts. So here we've got the main cabinet. This is where all of the main controls are at. None of the quote sensitive electronics are in here. None of the drives or anything like that are in here. This is a big conditioner, uh, power conditioner. And there's, I don't, it does other functions. I actually don't know what all these components do. It's gonna kind of briefly show you what's inside these things. Um, you got all the fuses back here, your main control board for all the I.O. for all the pumps and different uh, switches and stuff like that. There's another board over here. No, this is not a board, this is just a panel. Uh, big capacitor here, smoothing cap I assume, contactor for all the control, re uh, uh, probably for the drives if I'd imagine, right? Like I said, I don't know what some of this stuff is, I don't know really what it does. Like this control board is just a main interface board, but I don't have a clue what it does. I don't, have any, I don't have any actual documentation on what's in here. That down there appears to be just a generic power supply powering a bunch of uh, co very sensitive, probably, power for the, the rest of the unit. So that's what's back here. Again, this is just the big main control cabinet. This is the chiller. It does have an interface on the front, but it just chills the water to a, to a constant temperature. I don't even know what temperature it's set at, to be honest. And then on this side, uh, this is where all the goods are, which I'll get a little bit closer for you. So down here is where the wire is. This is where the wire comes out and it's, it's exposed of after it's burnt. So this is brand new wire I used to calibrate today. And you can see it's really shiny and new. And then the stuff right here, you can see it's all burnt. That's the stuff that's been machined, or I've used um, on an actual process. You can see how it removes material from the brass, but it also removes material from the um, whatever it is that you're cutting. There's the good stuff and there's the bad stuff. Now this this, this actually gets recycled completely. The whole bin just gets recycled and made into new wire if you give it to the right people. Uh, this is a little containment where the vac it actually vacuums out little bits of wire that, that if the wire breaks it cuts it automatically and does everything for you if you have that. Ours does. This back here is where the wire gets pulled out. Bad reflections. 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 Uh, this is where it gets pulled out and grounded. This is actually where the electrical connection is made to the wire, from my understanding. Because one day we had the wire coming out, and it was grounding against the actual ground down here on the concrete, and it was not working right. There's an oiler. Uh, the oiler just keeps everything oiled. I believe it's just for the auto uh, threader up here in the front. So let's get into the good bits. So why do I have this open in the first place? Well. I have this open because the batteries of which you see right here, uh, they're inside here, like this. Those batteries are just for backing up the position of the drive. So the drives actually have absolute encoders and they don't get lost when you lose power, but the battery backup will trigger an alarm which makes you reset everything and you have to replace the batteries. So I went in and replaced them all. Weird thing is, is these three were almost dead and didn't care, and these two care tremendously and they screw everything up. I don't know why. So you've got the X and the Y axis. I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. I'm not sure what axis this one is. Maybe these are both X and then Y because they're labeled separately, which makes more sense because I was confused before. I didn't know why this was labeled the same, so that has to be it. But this one actually flashes two different codes. I really think this one controls two different axes. See? X and Y. So it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. I'm not really sure why it's like that. Like I said, I don't know the true technical um, setup of this machine. I don't have any drawings. So these three drives, this is U, V, and Z. Uh, this might even be the B, which is an add-on. Very possible. Because there's nothing in that other box over there. Got some regular control circuit boards and stuff. I don't know what all these do, different controls. And one of these is probably for the auto threader. Um, I'll point that out in a second in case you're confused. More different boards going on here. It looks like a speed control pack. I don't know exactly what those are for. One interesting thing about this is look at all of these ferrite beads for the EMF. Look at this. 
That is crazy. This is the feedback cable. Okay, so this is what's coming back from the actual encoder off of the um, motor drives. And actually, I don't know where that one is. That one's for the spooler. The other two are up inside here, and you can't really see them tucked away. But the main, the main ones down here, you can see, this is actually the servo component in the back, I believe. Uh, they're pretty small. I'm actually surprised at how small they are. But you got to remember, this is non-contact machining. So the, all they have to do is move the table and what you have in it, and that's it. Where a big CNC machine has to brute force into those things, and this one doesn't. So anyway, the EMF that comes off this will usually kill my cameras. I actually have a camera sitting right there that's recording the live streaming 3D print over here. Get this thing to focus. There we go. And it will kill that. If you're running this machine, any camera close to this or any USB device, it'll just, it'll, it's like a big antenna. And it'll kill it. So they've got these really heavy-duty ferrite. It's pretty... I've never seen that many ferrite beads on an uh, on a, on a, on a encoder cable like that. It's pretty cool. So like I said, I don't know the, te the, the true technical detail of what's going on in this, except for I know that these are the drives here. And I don't know what the rest of these boards actually do. But there you go. Uh, so the auto threader I mentioned, this is the auto threader. This, this is an option for this machine. And what happens is the wire actually goes in here and will automatically shoot a jet of water, which is what the controls are here. This, I gotta make sure it's focused, the jet, okay? This is all the controls for the jet. And basically what happens is a jet of water shoots down inside of here. All right, and shoots down in through the bottom of this and pushes the wire with it. Okay, it's really simple. And this whole machine, this whole auto threader right here, what it does is it will automatically cut the wire right here with an electrical discharge. It will literally burn this wire in half. And then if the wire is right here because it didn't make it there, it won't pull it all the way back. It'll burn it off right here, short it out, and literally heat burn the wire in half. Okay, and it will actually grab it with these little rollers right here and suck it back up through this tube and that ends up back here in this chamber. That's what these are. So if we open this, that's what these are. These are pieces that have been vacuumed up and been cut out. So I can empty these. Doot. And I need to, now I need to clear the maintenance timer. It actually keeps track of how many times it does that so you don't overfill it. The machine's pretty smart. It's got a lot of safeties and features built in and maintenance timers and it'll even know exactly how much wire you put on it when you put a full roll on. It's pretty cool. You just tell it how much you put on there and it'll keep track as it runs it. So anyway, so that vacuums it up. This little tube will actually go down when it's needed and that allows the wire to be put right exactly at the tip and down to the bottom. So there's your brief overview uh, of what's inside the wire EDM. Another random video for you. But you know what? I think a lot of you will really like the, uh, let me get this camera down. I think a lot of you will really like the fact that I did this and you'll be thankful. So there you go. All right, peace and love you guys. Have a good day. Leave a comment if you wish. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. See you. Oh, if you don't know what the EDM is, it's a wire electro, it's a, uh, let me spit it out. It's an electro, uh, uh, eh, I'm going to just restart.